Hi everyone, you're here sewing with Cody. In today's video, we are going to start with a detailed overview of the new Bernina 735 sewing features. So this isn't the brochure overview where we cover everything that's listed in the brochure, but it's very similar, but I wanna highlight specific parts of the machine and really kind of dive into uh, what's on this machine and what it's fully capable of, especially if you haven't seen the Bernina 770 videos, because I mentioned this machine's very similar, um, but this is its own video, because it's deserving of its own video. It's such a wonderful machine. So before we dive in, let if you enjoy, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel to see other videos, and let's take a closer look at the new Bernina 735. So here we are at the new Bernina 735. And as you could see and seen in the preview, that this machine is a full-fledged 7 Series. So it's got the 8.5 inch, I'm sorry, it has the 10 inch needle to back the throat spacing, which is great for embroidering, doing some nice big embroidery, um, but also for quilting. This machine is a 5.5 millimeter stitch width. So if you have any Bernina that, like for instance, like a 440, a 530, a 550, a 475, um, a 3 series, a 2 series, you're going to be familiar with the smaller style feet, the 5.5 millimeter stitch width feet, like this number one here. And this is the feet that are best suited for this machine. That's going to be the, the feet that don't have a letter after the number which makes this machine excellent for piecing quilts or doing heirloom sewing. And with all of our Bernina machines, the feet come off super easily, and so do the stitch plates. So if you also have a, say, a Bernina 435, 475, um, or 535, the stitch plates are the same. So these are the same stitch plates that fit on those machines. This machine does take different stitch plates from the 770, 750, 780, 790, um, 570, 590, those types of machines. And so it does come with a 55 millimeter stitch plate, but the 0 millimeter stitch plate is always optional. Um, and it's one of those stitch plates I always recommend no matter what machine you're really working with, um, but especially a 9 millimeter. But this is um, a really nice addition to have to the 735. But again, it does not come with it. But all the stitch plates come on and off just like we're used to with all of our other Brina machines. And I've got videos going over detailed things like that. Uh, when we open down here, let's see, let's see a little better. So underneath here we have our bobbin sensor, which is something unique to this machine in relation to the fact that it's a five and a half millimeter. So we've only currently have a few machines in the current Brina lineup, the four. 35, 475, and 535 that are five and a half millimeters still, um, and they do not have a bobbin sensor, but this machine does. And if you're familiar with any of the current model Bernina machines, you'll know that we have a nice big jumbo bobbin. And the silver markings always go down into the bobbin case and down when you're winding a bobbin. It's an easy way to break your bobbin winder. And so with all of our Bernina machines, we do have the semi-automatic needle threader, which makes threading the needle super easy. I've got videos on that as well, a few of them. But as we take a closer look, so these are some of the most basic Bernina features that we have. Jumbo bobbin, this being a five and a half millimeter. Um, and as we move up into our buttons here, it's something that we've seen, we see on all of our Bernina machines. So quick side note, all of our Bernina machines, with the exception of the two remaining 3 Series and the 880, are designed just like this, except some of them are smaller. Um, none of them are really bigger than this, with the exception of the 880, but it's designed totally different. So the user interface and everything is the same with this machine and just about all the other machines, which makes it really easy for me to teach, makes it really easy for customers who have multiple machines um, to learn how to use these machines because they're, they're all the same. It's just either bigger or smaller. So we have our normal reverse, our automatic thread cutter, which cuts the top and the bottom thread. The next one is the button that will bring um, our foot up and down. So as I mentioned in the um, a previous 735 video is what 
really nice about this five and a half millimeter stitch width machine is that we have the hover feature, which also kind of translates into the, the foot going up and down automatically. So if I press this button, it will drop my foot, pop it up so I can reposition my fabric, and if I press on the foot pedal, it will drop the foot completely and I can start sewing. It's also the same button that will bring my foot up. However, if I press on the foot pedal with my foot that's on the floor, if I press on it, it will drop the foot, keep it down so I can start sewing. So this machine does not have a lever in the back to raise and lower our presser foot, um, like our other five and a half millimeter stitch width machines, but this is almost identical to how all the other seven series machines have been. The green button is how we will start and stop our embroidery, how you can turn on and turn off the BSR, or we can sew without using our foot pedal that's on the floor. And the machine will then sew or embroider at whatever speed we have this dial set to. Also, this dial will basically restrict how fast the machine will go. So if I press all the way down the foot pedal, wherever this is lined up, will basically be my max speed. So I can sew at a slower, more comfortable speed for me, and I can press all the way down the foot pedal and have that consistent speed, and that would be judged by wherever I have this move to. Our other four buttons up here, which we see on the 790 and on the 770 Plus machines, and that is our tie-off function. So we can have the machine tie off in the beginning every time we start and we can have that automatically and that's something we can change in the settings. I've got a video on that. Um, but also if we want it to tie off at a particular location, like if I stop and say, okay, I want to tie off right here, I can hit it, we'll see it appear on the screen and the very next thing it will do is it will knot and stitch in place. And there's different things you can change in the settings to do uh, with the tie-off function. The other one next to it that looks like a little triangle with three little dots at the bottom, this is our pattern end. So this is really nice if you are working with um, decorative stitches and you want to finish that decorative stitch and not stop and cut the thread and have a partially stitched pattern, you will click this button, it will light up, you'll still see a little stop sign appear on the screen, and what that will do is it will finish whatever decorative stitch I'm working with, and then it'll stop. Depending on what we have set in the settings will then depend on what will happen next. You can have where the machine will just stop after that pattern. You can also have it where it will tie off, cut the thread, and then raise the foot up. You can have it do a number of different combinations of those features all changed in the settings. And I've got videos going over that as well. A great little feature. The other one here where our needle is, so this is needle up and down. This will physically bring the needle up or bring the needle down. This will not change the position in which the needle will stop. That icon or that button is up here, which you can't see. Okay, so the icon in, in order to change the needle stopping position, so basically, if I stop sewing and I want my needle to stop down every single time, you want to make sure that the icon looks like this with the needle below that straight line. If I want the needle to always stop up, click it, and now, with, is, now the needle is above that line, so the needle is going to stop above our fabric, stop in the up position. This will physically bring it up or down. This will change the stopping position. I get this question a lot. Um, that's the difference between the two. They're really not the same at all. Um, some of our much older models, you would actually hold down this button, and that's how you would change that position, but that was pre-touchscreen. The last button we see here is very similar to the pattern end with our little triangle, except we have a line at the top. This is our pattern begin. So what this is gonna do, so if you didn't use this when sewing a decorative stitch, and so on the screen, let me change something here. So on the screen, if I'm working with a decorative stitch, and you can see where that little white dot is, that's where my needle position currently is. And if I stopped halfway through this flower design, and I'm gonna start sewing that flower design again, but somewhere else, it's gonna to wanna to start where I stop, which is halfway through the design, because the machine doesn't know that I'm really done with it, potentially. 
Um, so what we want to do is want to make sure that we tell the machine, okay, I want to restart this pattern from the very beginning. There are a couple ways to do that, but the easiest way on this machine is to hit the pattern begin button. You'll hit it and that little white dot, wherever it is within the pattern, will move to the very beginning and you'll start sewing that particular pattern, in this case the flower, from the very beginning. So those are those icons here. We've got a few buttons over here, which we should also be familiar with, but we're gonna go over them anyway. This is our needle position, position button. So let's go to a straight stitch you can really see. So here we can move the needle five spaces to the left. You'll see it change on the screen. That negative number represents we've moved the needle position three spaces to the left. If there is no number, like now, there is no number up here, that means we're in the center needle position. But if we move the needle position over to the right, we'll see a positive number all the way up to five. So these machines have 11 different needle positions, five to the left, five to the right, and then the center needle position. That number will always be there until we move it to the center. The other two knobs, these two knobs here represent, depending on where we're at, if we're on the sewing side, it represents our stitch width. As we turn them clockwise, you see the design get wider or narrower. We can change this with any of the designs that are built into the machine. This, the bottom knob represents the stitch length. So this is where we can change how long or how short that design is. Very self-explanatory. So our other icons we see on over here. This is the house is how we switch from sewing to embroidery and from embroidery to sewing. This is how we go to our settings. So we have a number of different settings, which is a whole nother video. We have our on-screen manual. So if you have questions about threading, like how do you wind the bobbin? Though if you click on it, it'll show you a nice little video on how to properly wind the bobbin for the Bernina 735. So there's usually a video for a lot of things and sometimes if you scroll down, you'll see some written instructions. The next icon is our creative consultant. That's our little mannequin here. So when we go to the creative consultant, it's going to it's going to take us to a number of different fabric options. And this actually takes me to our next button, which is our little question mark button. So if you have no idea what type of fabric this is, uh, or these are, you can click the question mark button, you can click the type of fabric, and then it's gonna give you specific details on what exactly what type of fabric falls in that category. So that particular icon I clicked on was a heavyweight knit. So if that's what you're working on, like fleece, you can click that heavyweight knit, tell it what type of application you're doing, say a zipper. It will give you some suggestions from stitches to needle types to thread types and what foot. You can hit the check mark and it will adjust and change a number of things for us. So we can see here it adjusted our needle position, it adjusted our foot stitch length, pressure, foot pressure, and tension, which we haven't gone over any of those things yet. But the Creative Consultant, basically you tell it what type of fabric and you tell it what type of application you're doing with that fabric and it's gonna make the adjustments for you. All you have to do is put on the correct needle, thread, and foot, and then you're pretty much good to go. Again, the question mark button can be used at any time. It's a one-time use button, meaning you can, you have to, when you use it, kind of like a genie. When you ask it a question, you click on it and say, what is this? You click on it, it tells you what it is. Some things have more options than others, but now if you have another question, you have to click it again. So you click it again and then you ask, what is that icon? And it tells you about it. So I've, I have had a number of customers over the years that click on whatever they want to learn about and then they'll click the question mark button and they couldn't figure out why they weren't, they weren't getting their questions answered or nothing would happen. You have to click the question mark button first. You'll see the screen kind of highlight in blue and a little blue question mark will appear in the center of the screen. So now whatever button you click next, it's going to tell you about that button. Oh, except for the eco button. So the eco button, which is the next icon, basically just puts your machine in hibernation mode. So it kind of powers it down without turning it off. That has its advantages. Uh, Cause with all the Bernina machines, we have temporary altered stitch memory, which basically mean when I jump from stitch to stitch working on the same project and I alter that particular stitch, 
but I go to another stitch and I may alter that. But when I say when I come back to a previous stitch that I've altered, it's going to keep everything that um, I changed to that stitch. So I, for instance, when I go to the straight stitch, it kept everything for that straight stitch, stitch length, needle position, everything. Same thing for, well, I didn't change anything with the number four stitch, but whenever we change stitches and you go back and forth, it keeps that memory. So if I turn the machine off, it's gonna erase all that memory. But if I just put it in eco mode, it's going to keep all that memory, but allow the machine to power down to a degree when I'm not working with it for you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes to an hour, whatever. But I wouldn't leave it in that mode overnight. I would turn it off um, just because there's no need to keep your machine on that long. And the other icon is a very helpful one. It's the clear icon or button. So this will clear anything that we changed with the exception of your foot selection. So we can see here we've changed a number of things because we went through Creative Consultant. We changed pressure foot pressure, which we haven't talked about, needle position, stitch length, tension, and the foot. And we know we changed it because those numbers are yellow. Typically they're gonna be white, like we see here with the 5.5. Anytime any number or anything is turned yellow, it means we've changed it from the default. So if I hit the clear button, everything but that foot selection is going to change back. So see, everything turned white or disappeared, with the exception of the foot, which we'll get to in a second. So that's the clear button. But the clear button only works on one particular stitch at a time. So if I made um, alterations to stitch one, two, and three, for instance, and I'm on stitch one, if I hit the clear button, it's only going to change the things or clear the things I changed on stitch one. It's going to leave stitch two and three alone. So the other side of the screen, we have our tension, which will adjust automatically depending on what stitch I select or how I change a stitch. So if you're working on a straight stitch and you're changing it, you'll see that tension change automatically. The, te the tension mechanism is right at the very top right behind here and you'll even hear it change as you change the stitches and that's it adjusting the top thread. It doesn't adjust the bottom thread, it only messes with the top. The other icon will take you to the same location as this icon here. So each this icon and this icon will take us to the same screen. So this is our security function screen. So the top row messes with the needles. So if you're working with anything other than a single straight stitch needle, you need to tell it. So if you're working with different types of twin needles, um, wing needles, you need to tell the machine so it can put any restrictions um, into the machine and what you're able to do so it doesn't break a needle and harm the machine or needles or stitch blades. The other, at the bottom, we see different types of stitch blades. So I've mentioned this in another video with the 735, I mentioned in many other videos. Bernina's hat, multiple stitch plates. We have a zero millimeter stitch plate, a five and a half millimeter stitch plate, and a nine millimeter stitch plate. Those are the most used ones. There are, you'll see, depending on your machine, you'll see there are sometimes a few other stitch plates, but those are the most common. This being a five and a half millimeter stitch width machine, there are really only two stitch plates for it. It comes with the five and a half millimeter, which is the one that's on it right now. We can see it here. So there's no stickers or anything up here. It just gives you your five and a half millimeters. So this stitch plate has no restriction, but this one, which is an optional stitch plate, which is wonderful, it's a straight stitch plate. And as you can see, it has like this reddish orange sticker at the top. That's basically telling it that it has some restrictions. So make sure you tell the machine that you are working with this stitch plate, because as you can see, there's just a single hole, just enough room for a single needle in the center needle position. So this way you can go and tell it what type of needle or what type of stitch plate you're working with. The next icon that shows the little presser foot, this is where you can tell the machine exactly what foot you're working with. So right now, it the machine told itself that it's working with a zipper foot. And that's because we had previously gone to the Creative Consultant and we told it we were putting in a zipper um, and it automatically put that foot into play. But here, we're not we're no longer, or not really even working with the number four foot. We're actually working with the number one foot, which is your universal everyday foot. And that's right here. So when we click here, you'll see all the list of all the different feet that this machine is capable of using. 
Bernina has over 100 different feet and accessories. Um, so there's a foot for everything and they're always coming out with new feet. But the most recommended foot usually is gonna be in this top left-hand corner. But you also notice all these feet with the gold stars. The gold stars represent feet that you can use with that stitch. So when I click on it, foot number one, now it's showing foot number one here and then it will display my foot number one. The next icon that we see here, or button on the screen, is our pressure foot pressure. So by default on the 735, it's set to 50. Some other models like the 5 series, the default is at 70. It just uses a different type of um, mechanism in the machine to adjust the pressure foot pressure. So that's why that one's set to 70. But most of all, the 7 series, if I recall, are set at 50 by default. But the pressure foot pressure can be changed by clicking here and adjusting it here. You can also use your knobs to adjust it. But what the pressure foot pressure is, is basically a, the amount of force or pressure that your foot here is applying to your fabric. So one of the times we change it most often is when we're working with stretchy fabric or working with fabric on the bias. You're going to want to reduce that pressure foot pressure quite a bit. I don't know if you remember earlier when we changed in the Creative Consultant and we told we were working with a knit fabric, which is a very stretchy fabric, it dropped that pressure foot pressure down into the 20s. And that's because less pressure, it will help the fabric feed through the machine without stretching. But a walking foot is makes all the difference in the world. But sometimes we're just piecing a quilt on the bias, so we would want to reduce that pressure foot pressure. The last two icons we see here, this just shows us where our feed dogs are currently, uh, like what state they're currently in. They're telling us right now that our feed dogs are currently up. If I click on it, you'll see a little video on how to engage or disengage your dual feed, I'm sorry, your feed dogs, which is a little button you can see that is on the side of the machine. So when you push it in, the feed dogs drop. So I'll push it in, you should see the feed dogs drop. So they dropped instantly and the button on the side is pushed in just like you see in the video. But when I push that button back in, the button pops out just like it was previously, which means the, the feed dogs have been re-engaged. However, do not panic. I get this call all the time. Do not panic that your feed dogs didn't pop up like they popped down. But don't worry, as soon as you turn that hand wheel on the side or as soon as you start sewing, your needle doesn't even come all the way down before your feed dogs re-engage. So do not panic. If the button, like you see on the screen here, pops completely out on the side, well, I mean completely out, I mean it pops out to be flush with the side of the machine like it was before you pushed it in, then your feed dogs are re-engaged. And as soon as you start sewing, they should um, pop right back up. If not, you may have a different problem. And the last button we see over here on the screen is just our bobbin sensor. So when we start running low, you'll see a little red, what looks like a little thermometer appear next to the machine, next to the bobbin on the screen here. And that's just tell, letting us know that we're running low on bobbin thread. If I were to click on it, it will show you a video on how to properly put in the bobbin on this machine, or put the bobbin in the bobbin case. And if you scroll down, you'll, there's not much there actually. But that's what that's for. There's really only a few more things um, that I want to go over. So on the screen here, the top number represents the stitch width, how wide that stitch is, which you can adjust with your top knob. The number on the side here, that represents our stitch length, how tight or how long that stitch is. The low plus sign here, this is how we go to combination mode. So I can click here and then I can go say to my alphabet, choose a different built-in alphabet font, and I can click and write my name or whatever you want to write. You can make an easy little quilt label, which I've got a video on the YouTube channel making a quilt label. And it's using the built-in fonts like we see here and using the combination mode. The other icon we see, well, let's first get, and this is something I get all the time as well. To get out of the combination mode, you hit the plus sign again. And it brings you back to your normal stitch that you were working with. The other icon we see here is not something we really use. Let me choose something so you can see a little better. So one thing I want to point out is the stitches we see on the screen currently, they're to scale. 
that's exactly what we can expect to stitch out on our fabric, the same size and everything. But if you wanna see an individual pattern, like say if you wanna see just one big individual flower, that's what this icon is right here. So I click this button. So now we can see the entire pattern. It's no longer to scale, but we can see the repeat. So this is one full pattern. And you'll see that little white dot move along the, the stitch to let you know where it currently is located in um, stitching as, um, as you're stitching out this pattern. I typically just leave it on this screen that we see here. But that's what that's for. And one of the last things we see on our screen is this eye. I, oh, I mentioned this in a lot of videos and every time I'm, when I try and troubleshoot machines over the phone at, at the shop, uh, it, I'm always, I feel like it can be a little confusing. Um, I'm always mentioning going to the eye screen or clicking the little eye button. And half the customers I talk to think that they're looking for an eyeball, like a human eyeball, which we do see in the settings which is why I think they might be getting confused. But the lowercase i button on the screen, that brings us to more icons or more information for that particular stitch that we're on. Depending on what stitch we have selected will depend on what buttons we see are available on the screen. You can see a number of icons are grayed out and we can't use them. That's because they're not applicable to this particular stitch. But I've, go, I've gone through all these buttons in previous videos, but I'll, go th I'll run through them again. So this one here is pattern repeat. So here you can tell the machine, I want to create two of those flowers. So I told, okay, now the machine will stitch two and then stop. It will only stitch those two and no more. Oh. Um, the other option, or another things we have on our eye screen is our mirror image, so we've got vertical mirror image, which you can flip the design, and we've got horizontal mirror image, which will flip it horizontally. But this one's symmetrical, so it really doesn't flip anything there. Um, the balancing function, which is something I go into detail in another video, but that's something that customers really never have to worry about. Um, but the next ones are something that are two functions that are kind of new on some of the machines um, and are really neat. The first one is the pattern elongation. This is not seen on every machine, but the 735 does have it. So if you want to make your design bigger, but make it bigger kind of proportionally, but actually fill in the stitches. So actually I can increase this flower by 100% and it'll make it bigger as you see on the screen. But what's hard to see, as you can see it here, is it fills in those stitches. So I didn't just stretch it out, I actually, kind of like what we see in embroidery, when I make it bigger, it will compensate for those stitches and add stitches into um, our design. And the other thing is this one here. This is our triple stitch function. So by clicking here, now this flower is going to stitch as a triple stitch. So it's going to be much more bold. It'll look like I'm using a thicker thread. And the last few icons we see on the screen over here, these are our different stitches, really. So the first one are all of our utility stitches. And if you want to open up and see more at a time, we can see currently there's three different pages. But this little arrow here, move it over, you'll be able to see a lot more stitches at once. So our utility stitches, which are the stitches that you'll see when you turn on the machine. Decorative stitches, and they're in different folders. So here is our holiday folders. Have a cute little pumpkin for fall. Next one are our alphabets, buttonholes, quilting stitches, personal save stitches, and how we can save stitches that we've changed or altered. And one of my favorite features is the last 15 used stitches. So this keeps track of the last 15 used or 15 stitches that were used on the machine. Not that were selected, but were actually stitched out. The beauty of this is it's not just the last 15 stitches that I use, but it's also how I use them. So if I made it wider, if I made the stitch narrower, if I move the needle position, change attention, all that kind of stuff, it will keep that saved. So I can go back to it and say, okay, the zigzag that I used, 
and how wide it was, how narrow it was, or whatnot. It'll have that saved automatically, especially if it's a stitch that I'm going to be using on a project and I forgot to save it and to make sure I have it the same size and everything for the next time I use it, it will automatically save it for us. It will save the last 15 used stitches. So that's pretty much it in a semi-detailed overview with the exception of the settings, but that needs to be another video because that that's a lot. Um, there's really not too much more to go over with the Bernina 735 except it's a wonderful new addition to the Bernina 7 series lineup. So the next video will be actually going over the embroidery side of the machine, which is a lot of fun um, because it gives you all those features that we are been known to love that we that we love with the Bernina like the 790 using the pinpoint placement, group and ungroup pattern resequencing, all those fun features that came to the 770 plus which the 790 and the 700 already had but now having it on a machine that's at a lower price point but still nice and big um, like the 735 it's going to be wonderful to be able to have those features. Alright if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel to see more videos and as always happy sewing.